Good morning, everyone. The other week, one of our technology team members came down to the church to, to check on some of our equipment. And while he was here, he shared a story with Father and me. He told us how one time a non-Greek, non-Orthodox friend of his came to visit our church. And while this non-Greek, non-Orthodox friend of his was looking all around the church, they stopped at one of the large icons up in the four corners of the chapel here. They looked up at the large icon and said to our parishioner, wow, so that guy must be Zeus, right? Now this is quite a common occurrence or misunderstanding that outside people might assume we worship Zeus. I know for me, every time someone hears that I am Greek Orthodox, or that my dad is a Greek Orthodox priest, someone will always say, oh cool, so that's like Zeus and those people, right? Now while this is an honest misunderstanding or misconception, it always sounds absolutely ridiculous. The thought that we worship Zeus and the ancient gods of Greece. It sounds ridiculous because the thought of idolatry or worshiping a false god seems primitive. It seems barbaric. It seems absurd. Because what is idolatry after all? Idolatry is the worship of something in place of the real God. Something else is established as more important. Something else is of a higher value than God himself. And while we all scoff at the thought of worshiping Zeus in place of God, unfortunately, each one of us likely has something that we actually do worship in our lives in place of God. Something else we place in higher importance. Something else we put a higher value on. Most of the time we do this without even noticing it. This is the precise situation the young man in today's gospel finds himself in. The young man is feeling pretty good about himself. He is a moral young man. He keeps all of the Ten Commandments. So he comes to Jesus today and he asks Jesus a question. He feels confident to ask Jesus the ultimate question because this young man feels like he's checked all the boxes when it comes to being a good person. So he asks Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He asks this thinking he'll get a positive answer or a thumbs up or a green light from Jesus into heaven. And Jesus levels with him, tells him the answer he wants to hear. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. Then the young man asks him which commandments, and Jesus lists them. Then the man pushes further still. All of these I have observed. In other words, I'm good to go. Then he asks, what do I still lack? Thinking the answer will be nothing. But this is where Jesus cuts right through to the point. This is where Jesus flips the situation upside down. The young man came in confident he would inherit eternal life. But Jesus tells him now, if you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And it says, of course, when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. The young man, probably without even knowing it, valued his great possessions, his money, his riches, 
more than he valued God. And too often, it's easy to think, okay, so being a rich person must be bad, and so as long as I'm not rich, I don't have to worry about a situation like this. But the young man today doesn't receive this bad news simply because he is rich. Jesus tells the young man to sell all his riches because to this young man, his riches had become his own God in his life. They had become an idol. They had become the thing of utmost importance to him. He looks to his riches for joy, for fulfillment, for meaning, for purpose. He may have kept the Ten Commandments, but his God was an entirely different God. It was his great possessions. Now we shouldn't look down on the young man in today's gospel, because each one of us likely has something we cling to more than we cling to God. It could be our job. We are so proud of what we do that this is our defining characteristic. This is what gives us meaning in life. Or it could even be a sports team we are obsessed with. It could be a political party we're on fire for. It could be our ego. Or it could, of course, be things even like drugs or alcohol and other addictions. And what happens when these things become gods in our lives? Our lives twist out of balance. These false idols bend up our lives in ways that they were never intended to. Last Thursday was the feast of Saint Fanurios. He is often a favorite saint for many people because Saint Fanurios is the saint we pray to when we lose something. And when we find what we are looking for, we bake a special cake, a fanuriopita, in thanks to Saint Fanurios. Now when we think of things we don't want to lose, we usually think of our keys, or maybe some money, a wallet. But just like we can lose our keys or our wallet, we can also lose our souls. And there is no quicker way we can lose our souls than when we place something above God in our lives. These days, now more than ever, it seems, everyone seems to be suffering from some anxiety problems. Adults, teenagers, even young kids unfortunately experience anxiety in some way. And this is no surprise, of course, given the extra stressful times and predicament we all find ourselves in. Even our Apple Watches, those of you who have them, will buzz periodically throughout the day to tell us to stop what we are doing and to take a minute to simply breathe to reduce stress. And if breathing alone can lower stress and anxiety, imagine how much more we might lower stress and anxiety with a simple prayer to God, a prayer for his love, a prayer for his mercy, and a prayer for his strength to center us. Saint Paisios, who I quote often because of how current he is as a modern day saint, and because his advice applies particularly to everyday life, has this to say about the issue of anxiety. He says, the answer to our anxiety is not drugs, alcohol, or any other such medications. It will not be cured by some new age meditation practice. The problem is that we have lost God as the center of our lives. Once we make our love of God the primary focus of our lives and allow his grace to work through us, then no matter what circumstance we encounter in life, we will be comforted and embraced in his love. All anxiety disappears. This is the aim of the Orthodox way of life, to put God first and seek the Holy Spirit. The anxieties of modern life are only symptoms of our separation from God. Now, when we have so many other things pulling us in different directions, 
and things that have even formed themselves as idols and false gods in our lives, it might sound hard to seek the love of God before anything else. Our money, our jobs, our sports teams, even our social media is right smack in front of us all day, every day. We don't have to seek these things out. They're already there. But God, we do have to seek out. He doesn't force his way into our lives like everything else does. We are required to reach out and seek him. This is the harsh reality the rich young man faces in today's gospel. And this is why we hear the famous quote from Jesus. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Even the disciples themselves are intimidated by this harsh reality, but this is when Jesus encourages them with an even more powerful statement after they ask him, who then can be saved? He responds to them with a statement that we should always keep in our minds, a statement that should always encourage us and remind us of the difference between human limitations and godly possibilities. Jesus responds to his disciples, saying to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen.